OK, so we talked a little bit about continuous random variables a bit earlier, but now we're really in a position to define these things uh, concretely and mathematically. And the tool we're going to use is the CDF that we talked about in the previous lesson. So remember, the setup for random variable is I have a, some sample space. I do an experiment. I get an outcome. I map that outcome via this random variable x to some real number. OK, and so we like to talk about real numbers in engineering. Here, x can be any real number, not just some discrete real number, or a real number from some discrete set. OK, so um, for example, let's suppose I'm talking about how long does my class last, right? Normally, I teach in blocks that are 80 minutes long, um, but sometimes I'm a little bit long and sometimes a little bit short. So let's suppose that x is a continuous random variable uniformly distributed in 70 minutes to 90 minutes. Okay. So what does the CDF for that random variable look like? So here are the possible values. The CDF, remember we use this capital F notation, and this is defined as the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to a certain value. Okay, so I know that class can't last less than 70 minutes, so the probability that x is less than or equal to, say, 68 is 0. So clearly things are 0 up to 70. And then if class is, you know, there's probability 1 that class is like less than 94 minutes, because I know it's always at most 90 minutes. So certainly at 90, I top out at 1. What happens in between? Well, the, the definition of a uniform random variable is that this probability accumulates steadily at a linear rate. Okay, And so let me actually figure out what this function is. Right. So before I flip to the next panel, so the rise over the run is going to be 1 over 20th. Right? So 1 20th is the slope. I should be able to write down explicitly what is the random variable. So it's 0 when um, x is less than 70. It was 1 when x was greater than or equal to 90. In between, it's got a slope of 1 20th, and that slope starts accumulating at 70. So if you want to be really precise, if someone tells you, OK, write down the CDF, you should always make sure to remember that there's probably a 0 and a 1 at the ends, and in the middle, you've got this function, right? Here, in this case, this is a linear function. And now I can use the CDF to compute probabilities. How can I do that? Well, let's think about what is the probability that x is in some interval, right? And I'm just going to write this in a slightly different way, because I think this is actually easier to understand. Something like this, right? What's the probability that I'm between a and b? OK, well, I can use the CDF to answer that question. And if I think about it, the reason I can use it is here is my um, interval in question. I can think about that as taking everything that happened up to B and subtracting everything that happened up to A. And what's left over is just the interval A to B, right? So this here is actually the CDF at B minus the CDF at A, OK? And so using this tool, now I can ask about the probability of any given interval, right? Suppose I want to know what's the probability that my class time is between 75 minutes and 82 minutes. Well, I would use the CDF to evaluate at 82 and 75, and I would compute, OK, well, this is 82 minus 70 over 20. This is 75 minus 70 over 20. Simplifying, this is just 82 minus 75 over 20, which is 7 over 20, which makes sense because it's basically 7 units of this 20 unit long interval, right? And actually, here I can see, we talked earlier about how a continuous random variable generally has probability 0 of being any particular value, right? 
The reason for that is that the probability that x equals 80, for example, that's like saying, well, what are my two endpoints? It's like I have the endpoint of 80 minus the endpoint of 80 is 0, right? A different way to think about this is, let's suppose that I consider some super teeny interval around 80, like 80 plus or minus 1 nanosecond, right? That number is going to get smaller and smaller in the limit, so the, the numerator is going to be 0, and the denominator is going to be the length of the interval. So this is generally the way it works for um, continuous random variables, is that you never have any probability of getting exactly some particular thing. I will say that it is possible to have some sort of like weird mixed random variable, but we're not going to really talk about that too much in this class. So the conclusion here is that the CDF is what will characterize a random variable. So I tell you the CDF and I have to find a new random variable. And so let me just say real quick that in the discrete world now we have the concept of the PMF, which is basically the probability of getting any particular outcome, little p. And then we integrated that to get the CDF, which in a discrete world is like this kind of stair-steppy function. And then we just learned about what does a CDF look like for a continuous random variable. So for example, this was something that's not stair-steppy. I can have a probability of getting anything, any particular value. So the big question is, what is the uh, thing that goes here for a continuous random variable? And that's what we're going to talk about next time. That's called the PDF, or the probability density function. And so you should kind of be able to guess that since we had to integrate this function to get to here, that will take the derivative of this function to get to here. And that's why there's all this calculus involved in probability, is because now we're going to enter a phase of doing a whole bunch of integrals mostly. And so that's why you have to be pretty sharp in calculus to be able to really do probability problems. Okay, so see you next time.